We have just witnessed Starship's most successful flight yet, but was it truly flawless? The answer is no. While the heat shield's discoloration drew attention, another concern emerged, an explosion that disrupted the engine bay. Though this issue may not hinder upcoming steps, it must be addressed to ensure even greater progress. So what caused this problem, and how will SpaceX resolve it? Let's explore the details on today's episode of Great SpaceX. This time, ship's journey can only be described as a true success, far beyond the expectations of many who had carried doubts after three consecutive failures. For the first time, Starship demonstrated a level of reliability and performance that began to silence critics and restore confidence in SpaceX's vision for the future. At the heart of this achievement was the Raptor engine system, which played an absolutely critical role in the mission's success. The engines provided the thrust needed to carry ship to the proper altitude for payload deployment. They also proved their strength and versatility during the in-space relight, a maneuver that was executed with precision. Following that, they successfully performed the boost back burn and the landing burn, which together enabled navigation control, proper deceleration, and ultimately a safe and controlled landing of the vehicle. This was a tremendous demonstration of progress for SpaceX. Yet this success did not come without moments of tension. Around T plus 47 minutes, observers noticed a sudden flash and what appeared to be a small explosion inside the engine bay. Debris could be seen scattering within the compartment, an alarming sight during an otherwise smooth mission. While the system continued functioning and ship carried on with its objectives, this incident was clearly unusual and demands closer attention. The engines had been performing extremely well up until that point, which raises the question, what exactly happened? There are several possible explanations for such an event. One theory is that the issue may have been caused by an external factor. During hypersonic flight, even the smallest foreign object can cause serious damage to a sensitive system. The engine bay, packed with plumbing, electronics, and structural supports, is particularly vulnerable to such impacts. Some have speculated that a fragment from a deployed Starlink satellite could have drifted back into the engine section. However, this seems unlikely, as Starlink satellites are robust and not prone to shedding fragile debris in that manner. A more plausible explanation could involve a heat shield tile breaking free during re-entry or fragments from the aft flap, which had already shown signs of stress damage. These components are located closer to the engine bay and thus could more realistically end up interfering with its systems. On the other hand, the evidence may point more strongly to an internal cause. One possibility is that the engine system suffered a fuel leak. Fuel leaks can occur if a vent becomes clogged, leading to unregulated pressure buildup inside the lines. Once that pressure exceeds a certain threshold, the line can rupture, spilling propellant into areas of extreme heat. In such a case, it'd take very little for that leaked fuel to ignite and cause a brief but dangerous explosion. Given that the engine had been firing heavily during ascent, hitting up the entire system, this theory holds some weight. Another possibility involves structural damage caused by vibrations. Rockets are subject to violent shaking during both ascent and re-entry, and even a minor crack or weakness could cause a sudden release of fuel or oxidizer at a vulnerable moment. Combined with the already high thermal environment, such a release could easily ignite. Temperature alone could also have been a factor. During re-entry, ship experiences intense aerodynamic heating. If any part of the engine system became overheated or if friction sparked in just the wrong place, it could have been enough to trigger a combustion event inside the bay. Each of these scenarios remains plausible, and it's likely that SpaceX engineers are investigating all of them thoroughly to ensure that future flights avoid similar risks. The incident did not derail the mission, but it highlighted just how complex and delicate these systems remain. So which explanation do you think is the most likely? Was it external debris, a fuel leak, structural stress, or pure thermal overload? Or do you see another possibility that might explain the explosion? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel so we can continue following SpaceX's remarkable journey together. Looking ahead, the real challenge for SpaceX will be implementing upgrades to address the issue and strengthen overall reliability. The good news is that the company already has a strong basis for confidence. Despite the unexpected issue with the engine bay, the overall performance of the system was impressive. The debris from the small explosion disappeared only minutes after the event, and crucially, the engines continued to function through later mission phases. The landing burn was carried out effectively, proving that the incident did not cause a severe or lasting impact. 
This resilience shows that the foundation of the design is strong, and with targeted upgrades, future missions can achieve even higher levels of reliability. The first area of focus will almost certainly be the protection of the engines themselves. Raptor 2, while already a highly advanced piece of engineering, is still extremely complex and sensitive. The vacuum variant, in particular, has demonstrated issues in past flights, such as pipes that developed small fires under stress. These components will need reinforcement to prevent similar events from reoccurring. Strengthening the materials and protective barriers around these delicate systems will give them greater resilience under extreme flight conditions. Beyond the engines themselves, support systems must also be enhanced. The cooling system is one of the most important. At present, it plays its main role during the engine chill phase, but in the future, it will need to operate more dynamically throughout the entire flight. A more active and responsive cooling system could mitigate overheating risks during ascent and re-entry. Adding advanced thermal regulation could also help the balance of the temperature difference between internal and external systems, which would reduce the risk of thermal shock during damaging sensitive components. Another area for consideration is a fire suppression system. In the event of a localized fire or small explosion, having an automated mechanism that activates instantly to extinguish the problem could be the difference between a recoverable incident and a catastrophic failure. This type of safeguard would be particularly valuable for the Raptor cluster inside the engine bay, where dozens of pipes and connectors create multiple potential points of failure. The engine bay itself will also need attention. It contains numerous intermediate pipes that connect the tanks to the engines, and any weaknesses in these areas could lead to dangerous leaks. In the past, harmonic vibrations caused by the fuel systems have been linked to failures, so strengthening these connections and mitigating resonance effects will be critical. This would ensure that even under the violent vibrations of launch and re-entry, the system remains stable. Of course, all of these improvements are directed toward the current generation Raptor 2, which will carry Starship through Flight 11. That mission will be the last of the V2 series. After that, the focus will shift toward the highly anticipated Raptor 3, a simplified yet more powerful engine designed to improve reliability. Raptor 3 promises to reduce complexity, making it easier to operate and maintain while delivering greater performance. Still, even with its inherent advantages, it will require robust support systems such as improved cooling and fire suppression to ensure mission success under the harshest conditions. Upgrades will not be limited to the engines. Other critical systems on Starship also demand attention. For example, components such as the aft flaps and heat shield tiles can break away under stress, creating the risk of debris interfering with the engine bay. Reinforcing these elements will not only protect the engines, but also improve the overall performance of the vehicle. Stronger flaps will ensure better navigation and controlled landings, while a more durable heat shield will protect the ship during re-entry, both of which are vital for full reusability. Super Heavy performed smoothly on its last flight, but suffered a mid-ring engine failure. Such issues are easier to fix through reinforcement, quality control, and monitoring. Flight 10 was a turning point, yet only the beginning. Flight 11 and the V3 series will expose more weaknesses, driving iterative upgrades. These refinements are not just about perfecting Starship, but about enabling orbital refueling, lunar missions, and eventually, Mars. Each step forward brings humanity closer to its next great leap beyond Earth. To better understand that progress, let's take a closer look at the engine system on Flight 10 before the problems appeared. Understanding what SpaceX has already accomplished, what it is refining now, and what lies ahead provides a clearer picture of the path forward. For a long time, many people, myself included, saw the Starship engine layout as complicated, even chaotic. With 33 engines clustered beneath the Super Heavy booster, it seemed difficult to imagine how such a dense arrangement could remain manageable. However, ahead of Flight 10, Elon Musk released an image of the booster's engine system, and it changed many perceptions. The first impression was one of order and precision. The layout was strikingly neat, with the engines carefully arranged in their rings and protective plates installed to shield their tops. The design conveyed a sense of reliability, demonstrating that behind the complexity lay meticulous organization. It was no longer just a forest of engines. It was a system with clear structure and purpose. That purpose is seen in the roles assigned to different engine groups. The outer ring engines covered by protective plating do not gimbal. Their role is to provide massive thrust to lift the rocket from the pad. By remaining fixed, they maximize stability and efficiency during ascent. 
In contrast, the middle ring, and especially the three inner ring engines, have gimbal capability. These engines are not just about thrust. They provide flexibility, steering, and precision control. Most importantly, the three central engines are crucial for navigation and for executing the landing burn. This layered design shows that the Raptor system is more than brute force. It is a carefully orchestrated balance of power and control. This impression of reliability deepened once the flight began. SpaceX released dramatic imagery from beneath the orbital launch mounts showing the ignition of all 33 engines. The view captured the moment the rocket roared to life, unleashing an almost unimaginable torrent of fire and energy. To accompany these visuals, SpaceX proudly declared, liftoff of Super Heavy, the most powerful launch vehicle in history, on Starship's 10th flight test. It was no exaggeration. Each Raptor 2 produces 230 tons of thrust, which is slightly less than Saturn V's F1. But with 33 engines, Starship surpasses every rocket in history. Its scalability is the key. Thrust can grow by adding engines while upgrades like Raptor 3 will boost power, reliability, and ease of use. Flight 12 is set to debut this new system on B-18, now preparing for testing. Future designs may expand to 35 booster engines and 9 vacuum engines on Starship, increasing thrust, redundancy, and deep space capability. Engines remain the most thrilling aspect of Starship's development. The Raptors are the heart of Starship, powerful yet still facing challenges. Flight 10 proved their potential, but upcoming missions with Raptor 3 and more engines will reveal how far SpaceX can push them. Each flight brings Starship closer to becoming not just the most powerful rocket, but a fully reusable one, ready for the Moon, Mars, and beyond. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.